Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad the Lord's love endures forever and ever? Praise the Lord. Had it not been for His great love, we would not be here today to celebrate our dads. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. We, and and you, some of you are not biological fathers, but you've been more of a father figure to people than you realize. You need to receive some celebration as well and some honor today because God has used you to influence others' lives that they wouldn't be where they are today had you not been there for them. And we celebrate all of you who are tuned in as well. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers uh, that may be at work or tuned in from uh, other parts that you're traveling and you joined with us today. We're glad you're with us here at Christian Embassy. For this is truly the day the Lord has made. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I made up my mind. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. we got a beautiful day to do that in as well. How many of you were here last night for movie night? Oh, what a great movie that was. You guys were eating popcorn and M&Ms and Snicker bars in the house of the Lord. Man, who it can't get no better than that, right? You were enjoying uh, that godly movie, and what a tremendous blessing that was as well. And now here you are back twice. I praise the Lord. Our first service was on fire, so you guys got to be on fire as well. And uh, it is good to celebrate on such a special day, not only you guys being here, but this is a special day for me. And, uh, and why is that? It's not because I'm not going to be preaching now, because I, thank God, I love to preach. I love to preach the Word of God. But, uh, you know, one of the greatest requests I had for the Lord was, Lord, help me. I didn't have this modeled for me, but I'm going to look at you. I'm going to study you. I'm going to get close to you and help me to be a godly father one day. And God has blessed us with three children. And uh, they and I said, Lord, help me to raise them up in the way that you should they should go, that they will not depart from you. And praise God, they're all serving the Lord. Townsend started about 15. He jumped in. We needed a children's church pastor in the first service. And he says, I'll do it. Uh, We had musician changes, leadership changes with our worship team. Uh, One of our worship leaders, the main one, took a tour traveling to countryside. And they said, jump on the bus if you want to go. And it was his life's dream. So he jumped on the bus and overnight left us in Townsend, stepped up on the praise team. And uh, and he's just been such a blessing behind the scenes, working in our AV and getting everybody trained and doing everything that happens there. And uh, anything needs to be done, we can call on Townsend. And uh, that's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. And... uh, And then Morgan, about 15, she steps it up on the worship team, and we needed a keyboard player, and she started playing the keyboard and singing on the praise team, and then we needed a a children's church pastor, and she says, you know, God's called me to teach, and she said, let me start with the little ones. They'll be less critical. I said, nope, 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 that's not the right thing. You can start with the little ones, but they'll be more critical because they tell you just what they think. And she's learned that for sure. And uh, so she was first service uh, with the children's church there. And uh, such a great worshiper and helping in anything we want done as well. And then there was the baby. There was the baby. And uh, he would sit on the front row. And you've heard this story, but for new people, they didn't. So let me just tell it. It won't take but three minutes and less. And uh, on the little chapel, he used to sit right where he's sitting now on that pew. And he's two or three years old, and he wouldn't go to children's church. And I'm like, Caleb, you know, they got goodies there. They got Skittles. Come on now, gummy bears, you know. And they're teaching the Bible at your level, and they're using a lot of curriculum and and arts and stuff that reinforce it. Don't you want to go to children's church? No, sir. I said, I'm thinking, what does a three-year-old get of sitting on listening to me preach, you know? And he would just sit there and stare at me the whole time I was preaching. And I'm like, wow, this kid. And then I say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a preacher. Oh, wow, okay. You're going to be a preacher? You don't want to be a fireman? You don't want to be a policeman? You don't want to be a doctor? Or, you know, no, be a preacher. Be a pastor. Okay, well, then, God, you've got him here. You're doing something in him that's beyond me. So I'm just going to let you do it. And one, one Sunday, we're driving out, going, turned on Elbow Road, and he's in the car seat, and it's just he and I, and we're headed home after the service, second service, and, 
And he'd been sitting on a little pew there, you know, pew there, staring me down the whole time I'm preaching. And I just said, Caleb, what are you thinking about while daddy's preaching? You know, what are you thinking about? Man, I'm just, I mean, God's talking to this kid, you know. And he goes, mm, and puts a little left hand up around that dimple he used to have right there. And he goes, mm, I'm maybe thinking, when will this be over? <laughs> I love that story because it's true. <laughs> and uh, so today, I, when you look at me over here, I, I might be thinking, no, I won't be thinking that, I promise. But... Uh, Caleb said, you know, I said, you go preach for us on Father's Day? He says, I'll do it. I said, really? He said, I'll do it. And I said, are you sure? He said, God gave me something. I'll, I'll, I'll preach. And I said, and then poor old mom, she's been, you know, yeah, how mamas are. And weeks, I mean, this was several weeks ago. And she's been like, are you sure? Are you sure? Even last night, you know, are you sure? He said, mom, mom, God gave me something. Chill out. It's okay. So we are going to be blessed today as we were in the first service by a young man who spends so much time in his prayer closet, spends so much time worshiping the Lord uh, that God is just talking to him. I mean, this is, this is Samuel just getting the voice straight from God and, uh, and reminds me when we named him Timothy Caleb Lambert, Timothy honoring God, steadfast and true, Caleb um, a, a mountain conquering giant destroying man of God that's what we named him and, and, and he's now taller than all of us at 15 and ready to step out and be used by God so without any further ado how about join me in welcoming Caleb Lambert as he preaches his second time first this morning was the first time on a Sunday morning come on up Amen. Amen. It is always a pleasure just to come and share God's word. It's always so much fun because <laughs> I love that. There's nothing boring about learning about God, talking about God. He's just, he's that one person that you can always brag on. And, and it's a good, it's a good brag. <laughs> you can always brag on him. And church, let me just tell you, I just got back from a trip last week. We went out um, to Pennsylvania and we had a great trip, but then we went down to D.C., and my parents made arrangements so we could go to a Maverick City concert, and that, as amazing as that was, I mean, that's like my favorite worship band, like, we, that was so much fun, but let me tell you, there's nothing like coming into the house of God, there's nothing like it, there's nothing like the presence, so even though the concert is fun, there's nothing like coming in here on a Sunday morning and just being filled. It's just an instant filling from the Holy Spirit. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers out here today. It is a very special day. Um, in fact, on three, can we all just scream happy Father's Day? Right? One, two, three. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. It is definitely important that we acknowledge them because they do a lot. A lot of behind the scenes that still I don't even know about, but I am truly thankful for them. But today, the, the labeling of the message is Earth's Way to God's Way. And the whole background of this message that God laid on my heart was that he's telling the church, we're going to start to stray away from everything the world's doing. Because what God's leading us into is nothing what the earth has. And, and it's really important to stress that it's literally nothing that the earth has. That there's not a single thing on this earth that is in your, your plan. Now God is going to use you while you're on this earth. But God's saying, I want you to do it my way. So as we're entering this message, I'm just going to hop right in. But if you guys could bow your heads while I open up in prayer. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for being such an awesome dad. Thank you for always taking care of us. Thank you for always being there for us. Father, right now, I just pray that my words will be yours. And Father, that everyone that has come out here this morning, that their hearts will be positioned to receive, to receive the word that you have laid on my heart, Father. And I just pray that everyone is, is blessed as they hear this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So... I'm just going to go ahead and hop right in. So it goes into five ways to follow in God's steps. 
And this is an important kind of just base of what I'm going to be talking about, of just how we can follow in God's steps, because God is our role model. And in everything that we do, we just want to be more like God, because there's nothing bad in Him. And God is literally perfection. So this is just going to be kind of a way for us to just see how we can really connect with Him. Because as our Father, it's always so important to continue to draw closer and closer to Him. But also, since He does everything so greatly, that we can just learn how we can replicate that so people can see God through us. So, on the first one, it's, There's no love like the Father's love. Can, can you guys say love? Love. love. Because I'm not talking about the, the romantic love. I'm not talking about the brotherly and friendly love. See, that's, to me, that's all surface level stuff because this love is so much different. This love is so much deeper and so much stronger. And we can, we can talk about, okay, all these different types of loves, but this is like the purest love there is. And the love that God provides, it, it's to such a higher level because in 1 John 4, 9 and 10, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. That, that right there, it just we can't even comprehend it. Because even when we cursed God, he still loved us. Even when we ran from God, He still chased us with love. And even though we didn't deserve it, He still loved us. And, and as we see it as a father on this earth, we can see it kind of visually, father on this earth loves his child so much. I know my dad, his like top priority is always, he always tells us, I love you, you know that I love you. And he's always reassuring us. But the thing is, God is is showing us his love through everything that he does for us and everything that he has created for us. See, when we really start to look at the world and everything, all the benefits that we have, that just shows God loved us so much that he, he did all this for us so that, may we, may, that we may dwell here. Not only that, but it talks about he gave his only son. See, we didn't deserve it. We're all sinners we're all not perfect, but he still sent his only son to die on the cross that we don't have to live in sin. That right there, that, that deserves us loving him back. That by itself. Just how good he is in that. He gave his only son. See, we could say we love someone, but God said, I'm going to show it because I gave you something so, so powerful. A second chance. A way to be cleansed white as snow. See, see that is that's amazing. And in Psalms 36 and 7, it says, How precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. See, again, God's love, it's not just about you feeling the love, but it also serves kind of as a, a shelter. That even though we may walk through shadows, we may walk through valleys and dark places, His love covers us. See, His love, it's not just a figure of speech. This is real love. And this is something we really got to grasp because we take it for granted too much. In day-to-day -day life, we say, God, I love you just because you love me so much more. And we can't equal up to how much he loves us, but we, we can definitely lo start loving him back. And then going into number two, there's no provision like the Father's provision. I, I hope you guys know that God is the best provider that there is. And that I've seen just me at 15, and I don't remember the, the young, young years of my life, just the ones that I remember, God has provided for me so much that, that even though there was not a way, God made a way. And it's one of those things where, where even no matter how much we want to think that we, we got this, we got to figure it out, it's not going to work out. But you got to know God's going to provide it. And the thing is, when we really start to give our all to God, He takes care of us. He provides the rest. See, it doesn't matter about the money. That's little stuff. It doesn't matter about relationships or a job. That's all little stuff to him. But if you let him in, then he'll start to provide. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. 
When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. That's amazing. Because on this earth, daily, Satan's always looking for a way. He's always looking for a way. He's always looking for you to trip you up and get you off the path. But God said, I have provided a way for you. I've already provided it. It's not that he will do it. He's already done it. You just have to start accessing it. And, and the thing is, when we're tempted, just know, okay, there's a way out. When, when you're in a situation, just say, God's already made a way out, so I'm going to let him take care of it. I can try and force one, making it, but I know God's already got one, so I'm just going to follow this. And then in Luke 12 and 24, look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than birds. I mean, that, that really puts it into perspective. You are God's children. A lot of you guys here may, may be adults and all this stuff, but you're still children of God. You guys have to know that. And when you talk to God, talk to him like he's your father. Sometimes you talk to him like you're an equal, but no, 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 no. God, he just wants you to talk to him and say, God, you're my child. Like, God, I'm your child. Sorry. <laughs> God, I'm your child. And, and you can really just say, God, because let me put it in perspective. My dad, I look to him as my provider, right, in my family. That's the same way God wants us to look to him. Even though my dad, I can physically go up to him and ask, you do the same thing to God, and God hears every call. And, and we really have to understand, God provides for all the animals, all the plants, everything in this world. Why wouldn't he provide for you? And a lot of people, they're rejecting this, and they don't want this. God's saying, it's right here. It's right here. See, I'll provide for them, and I'll do it for you, if not more. See, when you're going through trying to provide, sometimes as a father, that's their top priority. I need to get food on the table, pay the bills, and all this stuff. But sometimes, you really, the most important thing you can do, and I thank my dad for doing this, is providing your family with, with the spiritual life. That is the most important thing you can do. That by itself stands. Because in the end, God will bring the food. God will bring the money for the bills. You need to step it up and say, I'm going to lead my family into this relationship with God. I'm not letting Satan just toss us around. I'm not going to let life get in the way. And because he's done that, me at 15 years old, I'm here and I'm able to preach today. But that's only through the grace of God. That's only because he made the decision. See, it, it, it's a decision because God's a gentleman. He's not going to force anything. But the thing is, he's not going to force something good on you. But why wouldn't you want it? See, always, always, God, he wants what's good for you. He wants what's best for you. He wants to provide that. So, again, I always urge you guys, make that a priority. Provide your family. Provide your friends, everyone around you with that spiritual life. Keep that. Set the standard. Set the standard. Don't let, don't let life or Satan move it a little bit or push it up and down. No, you set the standard and say, this is the most important thing, and we're going to live by it. And then you're going to start to see the change. Because when you make God number one, then, then he can start taking control. Then he can really start providing. And then number three, there's no protection like the Father's protection. See, God is such a faithful Father. He is such a good Father. And... Again, we look at our fathers. Their top priority is protect their child. There's so many times I'll ask my dad, can I, can I go out and hang out this place? And he'll be like, no, it's too dangerous. And I'll be like, oh, but it'll be fun. He's like, no, 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 because his top priority is to protect me. But see, if my dad, if that's his mindset, that's just how it's wired. When you have a child, you want to protect that child. Again, we are all children of God. God is here and he wants to protect you. It breaks his heart when you, when you go out and try and do what you want, when you're broken, when you're hurting, it breaks his heart. God wants to protect you. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Right here. And it's, I love reading the Bible. Uh, It's just it's like a book of reassurance that whenever I'm struggling with something, I can go to it and I know that it's going to deliver what I need. And in this, whenever you're feeling doubt, whenever you're feeling afraid, like what's going to happen, just know God's saying, I've already got it. I've already got it. And he said, I will not abandon you. 
And there's one thing about God. If he says it, he's going to do it. He stands by it. He stands by his word. So if he says he's not going to abandon you, then even though it feels like it, even though it feels like it, you got to know. You got to know. You got to separate your mind from your flesh and say, flesh, I don't care what you feel because I know my God will never abandon me. I know my God, he's protecting. I know he's, he's ahead of me. And then down in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. If that doesn't just make your heart feel safe, that's one thing about protection. It makes you feel safe. He said, I'll protect you from the evil one. I'll guard you from the evil one. See, as we're here on this earth, Satan's whole drive is to steal, kill, and destroy. And God said, I will protect you from him. See, we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live sad that we're dealing with things because God said, I've provided protection from that. So then when, you're, when Satan's trying to torment your mind, trying to change your circumstances, see, God's a protection. God, he put a shield around your body, a shield that you can walk day to day, day to day, free, free of mind, free of mind, pure joy. Because God said, I've provided that protection. Again, you just need to reach out. You just need to reach out. And, and again, as, as a father, he, he protects his family, but also realizing that it's not just that physically. See, everything also is happening in the spiritual realm. And I've I found out that the spiritual realm is so real, if not realer than the one we're living in. And always just keep your mind open and just, again, that providing that spiritual life, it also provides the protection. So moving on to number four, there's no leadership like the Father's leadership. That We've seen so many times in the Bible that God led so many people, but I love it because God uses people, and he, he uses them to lead others. But ultimately, God's, God's the leader. God's the leader. And no matter what we do, as long as we follow him, he will lead you into your breakthrough. He'll lead you into your increase. In Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. See, when we start to put down what we want, and we say, God, where are you leading me? He, he's already got the path picked out for you. He's already got it. He's already got the path that, that you're going to take. It's just a question of, are you going to take it? Are you going to detour, or are you going to say, you know what? I'm not worried about what I'm going to do today, because God's already planned that for me. I'm just going to walk in it. And another thing is so fun. It's so fun just to walk on God's path, because when we just do what we want, it ends to nothing. It results to nothing. But when we say, okay, God, where are you taking me today? Then breakthrough, freedom, something new happens every day. When you, if you feel like you're just going through a loop of day-to-day life, waking up, going to work, going to sleep, waking up, going to if you feel like that, then you can know that God's got something better for you so that you can wake up, feel joy, go to work, and God will give you a word for somebody. So, or maybe he'll lead you somewhere else or he'll lead you into a better job. See, when you let God lead you, he's going to lead you into the next big awakening for your life, just as he used Moses to lead the Israelites. See, it's happening everywhere, and he shows evidence everywhere throughout his word. And in Isaiah 58 and 11, it says, The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and resting, restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. See, when you let God lead you, he doesn't just lead you. That's not, no, 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 no. That's just the, the beginning. See, once he starts leading you, then he's also restoring your strength. Yeah. Then he's also watering you like, like the garden so you become stronger and taller. Yeah. See, it's, it's not, it doesn't just stop there. That's, that's just the beginning. And when you start to let him do that, then everything else starts to flow. Then you're starting to see your strength. And even though you didn't feel like praising God, when you pushed through and said, okay, I'm gonna, he's, he's telling me I need to spend some time with him. Then when you do, then you feel the strength. Then you know what you need to do. And in Isaiah 48 and 17, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you who directs you in the way you should go. See, again, God just shows so much through his word. He's always leading you. He's always showing you. He, he'll tell you where to go. 
If there's a big decision and you don't know what to do, you don't know how to go about, God said, I got it. Just, just start to focus on me. And I have another verse in Psalms. It's Psalms 23.2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. See, a lot of times we get caught up in the craziness of this world. But if you take the time, he will lead you beside quiet waters. That, the peace that surpasses all peace. He will lead you by those still waters that in the end of the day, you can just say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Number five, there's no success like the Father's success. And we, that is known without a doubt. We can see in the whole world that he's made, it's beautiful. He made it in his image, and it was good. There's no success. See, me at 15, I'm, I'm just growing up. And I love this because I'm just growing up in the middle of my teenage years, but I am still so successful. Not that I have a bunch of money, not that I have a bunch of fame, but I'm still so successful because I'm doing it God's way. I'm still so successful because I'm not worried about what the earth's, earth's way. I'm not looking at their way of success. I'm looking at God's way of success. And I can tell you it'll make you 10 times happier person. And there's a Bible story in Genesis 39, 2 through 4. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did. That's all it takes. The Lord was with him, so he was successful. See, you guys think you have to do so much for God, but all you have to do is just let him come live in you. Because when God's in you, then the success is in you. And the success was in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This ple oh, that's moving on, but I'll go ahead and read it. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. See, Joseph, he went through a process, right? He had this dream, he shared it, and he was like, wow, this is going to be something great. But then his brothers threw him in a pit, and he was sold. He was sold off. See, through all that, I know for me personally, it would be tough. I'd be like, okay, God, what's happening? Why, why is all this bad stuff happening? But see, he knew where his success came from. He knew where his success came from. He knew where the power was. He said, okay, I was thrown in this pit. I was sold. I'm in prison. But I still know my success is in God. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my faith in God. And then another thing, they could see the success. They could see. See, when you have God in you, people can see it. People can see it. If you, if you want to make a difference in this world, sometimes you just, need, you just need to have God in you because people see it. See, breakthroughs don't happen through, they don't have to happen through a big service. It can just happen by you being obedient. And because Joseph, he was so, he was so faithful in, in staying firm with God, he was made successful. He was made hired to a higher rank. He was made, he, he, he was given so much more. And he had every reason to be mad. He had every reason to turn, but he didn't because he knew. Guys, we need to engrave in our brain. We say our successor, we know who it is, and we don't care what happens. We don't care how bad circumstances look because we know he has the final say. We know he has won every battle, and he doesn't plan on losing one yet. Amen. And in Proverbs 16 and 3, it says, Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. See, this is another big thing. Sometimes we, we try to do things ourselves. See, we need to really commit ourselves. Say, God, you take them, you take them, and, and your plans will succeed. See, it, it's so, so amazing because we know the Bible is the truth, and, and this is just exciting promises that he's left for us. So I've just left you guys with those five, those five steps. These are just things that, that we can really learn, how God did it and how we can start to, to use them and apply them. But... The thing is, with each one, there's love, provision, protection, leadership, and success. See, anybody can do these things, right? See, that's, that's where the change comes. Because you can do it Earth's way. You can love Earth's way. That's possible. You can be successful and you can lead. Or if you do it God's way, then that's when the real change happens. Because I see so many people, they, they're like, okay, oh, I'm so successful. But if you're not doing it with God, it means nothing. 
See, because in the end, we're not staying on this earth. We need to focus and realize we got to do it God's way because that's where the real power comes from. And in fact, everyone here today, you guys are here because you know where the power comes from. We know who the provider is. So you can think of those, those five steps kind of as a car. It's kind of a metaphor. Look at it as a car. And we all know that without gas, the car can't work, right? It needs that, that power. It needs that, that push. So now I'm going to provide you guys with the gas. And it's four necessary steps to activate God's way. And this is, the reason I put necessary is because it's not a suggestion. It's not, you can do it if you want to. These are necessary steps that if you're not, if you're not doing these, then, then it's not going to shape you. It's not going to activate it. And like I said, a lot of people, they say, I have success. But then they, they pour gas in the tank, they turn the key, and it still says empty. They, they got some faulty gas in their car because there's no power in it. So, so four necessary steps to activate God's way. And number one is know who God is. See, we can't, we can't praise him. We can't love him. We can't follow him if we don't know who he is. We, we need to... And, and we're probably wondering, how? How do I really know who God is? Because a lot of people, he th they think he's a religion. A lot of people think he's just a name. But see, we really need to get into the word. Because the word is almost like an autobiography, like a resume. God's saying, if you want to know who I am, then read what I'm all about. I've made a book, what I'm all about. If you want to know what I'm about, I've told you. I've told you. People want to hear it all in the moment like thunder strikes. No, God's saying, I've put it right here. You want to know the promises. You want to know what I provide. It's right here. It's in my word. And, and until you know who he's about, then you're not going to really love God. So you can say, I love him. But if you don't know what he's truly all about, what he's truly done for you, the sacrifice. And... In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. See, that's just one verse in the whole Bible. But yet, yeah, that just sums it up. Plans to prosper you. If someone says, who's God? He is a provider that he wants to prosper you. He wants to give you plans for a future and a hope. A lot of people don't think they have a future. They don't think they're good enough for anything. But God said, no, you do have a future. You do have hope. Even though it doesn't seem like it, you do. And, and it just combats every lie that Satan's trying to throw at us. And number two, allow God to be first in your life. See, this is definitely the most important one. If God's not first, then then it's, it just doesn't work. That's not, that's not how it works. See, God, he, although he is a gentleman, he's also a jealous God. Yes. See, God is a jealous God, and he will not be second. He will not be half-heartedly praised. God said, I want you to praise me with all your heart, with all your heart. And until he's first in your life, then the things don't flow. See, a lot of people say, okay, good stuff happens when I follow God, so I'll try it. See, it's, God's not something you try. God's somebody that you love, that you have relationship with, that you praise, that you always look to and you can always thank. And in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and, right, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Again, it's like, it's like an instruction manual. It says, seek first the kingdom and everything else is added. Everything, even the five things I talked about, those will all be added when you seek first his kingdom. Yes. Number three, it says, don't just follow God for the benefits. See, this is something I've, I've even had to work on. You know it's a word from God when you're preaching to yourself, <laughs> when you're writing it down. But don't just, see, a lot of us, we get caught up. We get caught up. Oh, this amazing thing happened. Oh, this amazing thing happened. My life is better than ever. But then you forget to give God the glory. And Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 through 38, says, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, a lot of people, they focus on verse 37, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. See, God showed me a different aspect. In verse 38, it says, This is the first and greatest commandment. And that's because it says, Love the Lord with all your heart. Not loving the benefits, 
Not loving what He can bring for you. Love the Lord. And it, don't love Him because He'll do good things for you. Love Him just because He's God. That should be enough. That should be enough. If loving Him just because He's so, so good, just loving Him because He's God, if that's not good enough, then I don't know what is. Because He's just so amazing. He doesn't have to do anything for us. And that's, that's when the true breakthrough happens. Because it's easy to say, oh, I love God and, and I'll follow Him in the good times, but in the bad times. See, remember this. Remember this. Because it's not always going to be benefit 20, 24, 7, 24, 7, 24, 7. See, sometimes you've got to love God no matter what. Yeah. And, and it's saying this is so important. And the thing is, you need to thank God for the benefits, not love Him for them. And you can't, you can't love the benefits. You thank Him for the benefits. So you say, God, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. Not, God, I love you. See, the same thing if, if I put it in perspective. Imagine I only hung out with my dad because he gave me stuff. Because he gave me food. That would be pretty sad. And it, it would break, I can just imagine, it breaks God's heart. People just saying, oh, I need more money. Oh, God, I love you. I love you. <laughs> See, God's saying, I want you to love me with the whole heart. And that leads me to my fourth one. Be intimate with God. See, spending time with God, anybody can spend time with God. But being intimate, that is, that is such a deeper level. And it's something that I've really started to discover, and I've started to realize that that's where true change comes. Everything else won't matter if you're not intimate with God. Because you can love God for a season, but it's different to be intimate. You can spend time just because, oh, I, I, need, I need more blessing, I need more blessing, let me spend time with God. Or it looks good on my, my record, I say I read my Bible. But if you're not applying it, see, God wants you to be intimate with Him. He wants to be intimate with His children. Set, a time, set aside some time, because there's no time in the world that's wasted with God. See, it doesn't matter. There's been so many times where I've made it to school Probably almost like every day. I was, I had one minute before the bell would ring every day. And that's because I would be up super late just getting into my word, just talking to God. Sometimes it would just be sitting on the floor in my room and just listening to what he's trying to show me. And I'll tell you guys, it is the most amazing thing you can do. God will start to show you visions. He'll start to tell you things. He'll start to show you more of the path that he has for you. It's so amazing, but, but a lot of people, we, we really got to tone in intimacy. Yeah. See, God just really wants you to put aside everything. Make him number one and say, God, I'm here for you. I'm here for you and who you stand for. Amen. And James 4 and 8 says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and God. In the world. See, when you spend that time in intimacy, when you draw close to God, you say, God, I'm here for you. Nothing else. I don't even care if I hear from you. I'm just here for you. I know you hear me when I call. I'm just here for you. Even if it's just sitting there and listening. Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Remember that. Don't think that he's far. Don't think that he doesn't hear you because he's there. And also, like I was saying, God is a jealous God. Don't be divided between God and the world. Be fully, wholeheartedly sold on God. And intimacy, the definition, is a feeling of being close and emotionally connected and supported. It means being able to share a whole range of thoughts, feelings, and experiences. See, intimacy, I love it. I love it so much because it's so much deeper. It has so much more meaning than just, oh, I spent some time with God, I spent a couple minutes. See, intimacy is when you're really serious, when you're really meaning it. A lot of people, we really gotta put away the act. God's saying no more playing around with the earth's way, God's way. See, see there's even a, a God's way for being intimate, with spending time with him. And this is such a, a way that he put it in my heart. So here today, fathers, just remember these things. Because you can love your family, you can do all of those things, but without God, it's nothing. And just remember that all your success, 
all of your success, God wants to bring more. Sometimes we can hit a roadblock. Sometimes we can stop. Sometimes if a season passes, it doesn't matter what the season is. I'm not here for a good season. I'm here for God. And it's so much sweeter when you're fully sold out. So here today, I just want you guys just to just remember the times God has been good to you. Remember the times when crazy, God's done crazy things in your life. Remember them and keep them. So then when, when any doubt starts to creep in, when anything from Satan tries to creep in, you say, no, 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 no. I remember what God did for me not just on the cross with his son, but in my own life. God will make it personal for you. Just remember that and start to apply it. Say, God, I know you've you've helped me before and you'll do it again. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your, your loving kindness. Father, we don't thank you enough for all that you do. Thank you for for being there for us, for being our Father. Father, we we can't all have the perfect dad here on earth, but we do have a perfect Father in heaven. Thank you for all of your many blessings. Father, right now, I just pray that if anybody in here has been hurting, has been doubting, that they lay aside what the earth says, what the world says, if their father wasn't the best father, that they can put it down and know that there is a great father in heaven that is right there, right there in front of them even now as we pray. Father, that they will reach out and just accept the love, the kindness, the goodness, the peace. Father, right now I just pray, I pray blessing and prosperity over everybody. Father, I pray that as everyone walks out, That they don't just wait to go through their week to love you, but they can just start right now. They can just start right now, Father. They can just reach out and say, God, I'm doing it your way. Your way is better. You've never lost a battle. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Caleb, for being obedient to the Lord and letting the Holy Spirit use you. You can only imagine this dad is smiling from ear to ear. Praise the Lord. And uh, but I am not the only dad smiling. I'm only here to reflect our true Heavenly Father. And I believe he's smiling from ear to ear, not just because of Caleb's obedience, but because of your willingness to give him your all and obey him this week. He read that scripture out of James where God says, if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. When he said that, I heard the Holy Spirit just, he didn't hear him say it. He showed me a picture, uh, like a movie in my mind. And the Holy Spirit showed me the, the father. Remember the father of the prodigal son. And the prodigal son had rebelled, and the prodigal son had left the home, and the prodigal son was doing his own thing, and it led him to a very low place. He's eating with the pigs. He's he is uh, starving basically, and having to eat with pigs to even survive. But he came to himself, and he remembered. You know what? As Caleb said, remember how good God's been to you. He remembered God. My father is good to me. The servants in my father's house have it better off than I do. So I'm going to go back home. And I'm going to ask God, my father, to forgive me. And I'm going to be willing just to serve in the house. I'm not to be a son, just to serve. Draw nigh unto me, God said, and I'll draw nigh unto you. He started going back home. The father already had it planned, had the fatted calf picked out. My son comes home. We're going to celebrate. Had a robe for him. Had a ring for his finger. Had shoes for his feet. He's going to clean him up. He said, I don't care how he comes home. I don't care what mess he's in. That doesn't matter. He's my son. I'm going to receive him. And he's looking for him. He's looking, the Bible says. And when the son was yet a far distance off, the father goes running to meet him. 
That's your heavenly Father. No matter what a mess you've made of your life, let me tell you, if you will come to your senses and do what Caleb said, not the earth's way, but heaven's way, God's way, say, you know what? God, my earthly father may have rejected me. May, I may have never even known him. But if I'll draw near to you, Heavenly Father, you're looking to run to me. You're wanting to lift me. You're wanting to elevate. You're wanting to promote. You're wanting to cleanse me. You're wanting to restore me. You're wanting to bless me. But you got to come to him. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. As we close in this prayer, maybe you're here this morning. And you can say, well, you know what? There's been some rebellion in my life, and there's been some independence, and I have tried it up my own way. I've let the, the earth's way, maybe my earthly father or father figures have been, been ungodly in my life, and the earth's way. I've let rebellion come in earth's way. I've got very independent. i got to do it for myself. Whatever it may be, you've been doing it earth's way, and it's pulled you away from God. Here on this Father's Day, you can make a decision right now that you can walk through the rest of your life. It can begin right now where you say, you know what? I've come to my senses. I'm going to stop trying to figure it all out. I'm going to stop trying to make it all happen. I'm going to stop doing all. I'm going back to my Father. And if you will turn and begin to move towards your Father, your Father, I'm telling you, Father God is ready to come running to meet you. And to elevate you and to cleanse you and to bless you and to prosper you in only ways that his love is expressed in and through your life. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, we just bow our heads before you now. We thank you, God, for this word this morning. We thank you for being the perfect, perfect father. A good, good father. Lord, I believe your Holy Spirit has been convicting and speaking to people here in this room as well as those that have tuned in and they see the error of their way that they let the earth's way cause them to become distant from you that failures and disappointments have caused them to pull back rather than move forward towards you but Lord as that prodigal son came to his senses I pray we would come to our senses even now And say, you know what? I'm going back to my father's house. That intimacy with him, putting him first and worshiping him and loving him and serving him and honoring him. There's nothing better. That's what I was created to do. And all the success, all that stuff, that comes because I put him first. It's more about you, Father God. If you're here this morning and you say, you know, Pastor, this word has spoken to me and I'm not where I need to be, but I've made the decision. I am drawing near to God today. I am moving forward to Him. Won't you just raise your hand? Faith without works is dead. We need to do something. Just raise your hand. Let that be your faith act right now. I'm raising my hand right now and saying, Pastor, I want you to pray with me to just remember me this week as you're praying. And, and Holy Spirit, see me right now. I am moving towards Father God. I am moving towards His embrace. I'm going to stop trying to do it in my own strength. And I'm going to serve you. And I'm going to love you. And, and I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm going to let Him put the robe on me. I'm going to let Him give me the promotion. I'm going to let Him cling me up. I'm going to let Him fix me. I'm going to let Him give me the wisdom that I need. But God, see my hand. Just, just right before we pray, just lift it, lift it, lift it. Yes, lift it up. Now, as you hold it up, Father, you see these hands right now. Father, these are the hands. These are the ones that are moving towards you. You are looking out to see if anyone's going to draw near to you so you could run, draw near to them. You see these hands, Father. The, I hear the Father's running. The Father's running. The Father's running to you. He has a plan of celebration, a plan of promotion, a plan of cleansing, a plan of restoration, a plan for the next level for you right now. Hallelujah. Say, I welcome you. He came and embraced you. He is here to embrace you. He is here to kiss you. He is here to love you. He is here to hug you. He is here to go home with you. He is here to walk with you through this week. He is our good, good Father. We welcome you in and through your Son, Jesus Christ, who made all things possible. To you be the glory and the honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, as you stand here, God said in His Word, I want my people to be blessed so much. I don't want not one generation. I don't want the youngest to the oldest, not one generation to miss my blessing. So much so, I'm going to give you instructions that you take my word, you honor my word, and as you speak my word, I will come and just like smear you with oil and you'll leave here greasy. I will smear you with my blessing. I will mark you with my blessing. And we're going to do that right now through song and then through the word. So this is God's word. God's word. This is this how God said to get the blessing on you. And we're going to do it God's way. Y'all sing. Established on you now. Amen. 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 Be upon you and a thousand generations, and family, and your children, and their children their children and may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and their children his presence be before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you. So be it. Amen. Oh, let it be established. Now let me read it. I now ask for the Lord to bless you and protect you from all harm. May the Lord show you His favor and provisions. May God do for you great and mighty things so that you may see the goodness of God and the mercy of God in all of the beauty of His holiness. May the Lord surround you with His loving kindness. May He show you His divine approval May He fill you and give you and establish you upon His peace. May God give you a heart that is full of life, full of love, full of purpose, and full of destiny. I speak in the name of Jesus over each and every one of you now. May God's hand be on you. May God's heart beat within you. May God's Spirit fill you. May God, through the power of His Word, bring forth wholeness and fullness in every area of your life. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing left out. May God take you into this week with His Holy Spirit, 
moving and ministering and expressing his divine nature and love in you with such in-depth intimacy that you know the heartbeat of your father that you want to please him more than anything and anyone on planet earth and that every step that you take will be ordered by god that every word that you speak it will be seasoned by the favor of God that you will speak life and not death. That you will release words of blessing rather than curses. That you're going to the next level. That you're going higher. That you are being promoted. That you are seeing the goodness of the Lord. Oh, if you're in need this week, if you need anything, look unto the hills. Look up. From your redemption draweth nigh. Your redemption comes from your Father. Your redemption is already made clear and certain and provided through His Son, Jesus Christ. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus who showed us the love of the Father that He might be your Lord and your Savior. I pray this in the name of the Father. I pray this in the name of the Son. And I pray this in the name of the Holy Spirit. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. And everyone who receives it now says, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Father's Day. Let us go in the blessing of the Lord. And be a blessing to those around you as you go in Jesus' name.